I am Bill Cortright with Living Right with Bill Cortright. And this is the Stress Mastery Podcast, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress mastery. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am your host, Bill Cortright, and I am here with my co host, my partner in crime, the super millennial. David Barreto, how you doing there, Super? I'm doing good. So this week, our topic is constraint. In today's Connection Thursday, we are discussing how the slow down technique connects us to freedom. Before we get started, do you have anything, David? Um, yeah, uh, we're going to start. Uh, for those of you guys in the community, we got a cool little series coming up. It's a little bit more creative. And it's a, a little project that I'm working on. So uh, if you guys want to see and, you know, find out what it is, I will be announcing it over the next few days. Um, but it is going to be a community exclusive. Okay, excellent. Plus, this weekend we will uh, be releasing. Do you release the new uh, lessons on Sunday or Monday? Or, um, oh, yeah. So it depends on when I get it on Sunday. But okay. uh, Monday is the absolute latest that will be uploaded. So that will be lesson three of module eight on the art of forgiveness. And that's going to um, help you anchor everything from lesson two. So I'll give you that. That'll be put up and it'll be done and you guys will have everything you need. So this week, our topic is constraint. Today's Connection Thursday, we are discussing how the slow down process connects us to freedom. As we have discussed throughout this week, constraint is defined as a limitation or restriction. In yesterday's Meeting of the Minds, we discussed the human constraint and how when we get trapped in that stage three of development, socialized mind, we get trapped in the restriction of our cultural stories and programmings. Now, freedom is defined as the power or right to act to speak or think as one wants without constraint. So we can see if one is trapped in the human constraint as discussed yesterday, they live their lives through the perception set through the tribalization process of early childhood. And this sets their expectations of how things should be. And this sets their state in event, judgment and reaction. And this will drive behavior to come out in frustration and anger. And this state of judgment basically is judging what is happening. So I want people, you know, some of the things that came back to me, David, is on judgment, right? What do you mean? I don't judge. I'm not, I don't have judgment. The state of judgment is when you're judging <laughs> what's happening mm -hmm. right you understand do you understand what i mean when i'm using that yeah just if you have an opinion on what's going on yeah you know? it's it's this energy you know when you look at it it creates the, when you're in judgment it creates that defend and attack and it what it does is it activates the energy of anger and when we are in that energy of anger it will settle in the guilt energy with regret now when one lives in perceives life from the human constraint, they will fail to use their free will. They believe they are free and they are making their own choices. But upon a closer review, you will notice a pattern of behavior that leaves you exhausted and stressed out. This state affects the body and mind and it creates a life in struggle. Does that make sense to you, David? So when you hear, well, I have free will, it's my right, you know, to act and do, how does that settle to you? Uh, I, I think it's that they, they want to be able to control whatever they're doing. It's you can't tell me what to do or even if they want to do it and someone else tells them to do it, now they don't want to do it. Just because so, you said it, yeah. And you saw what I mean, right? Yeah. So like that. So the state of being is the opposite. You know, the state of being stressed out and, and the state of being in judgment and, and reaction is the opposite of freedom. 
See, when you are trapped in that human constraint, the ego has conscious mind control. And understand, this is what sets the state of the body to support the focus and thoughts within the mind. And just know, become aware when you judge anything, you are fighting or resisting what is happening in the moment. In this focus of fear, remember the Homo sapien is built for survival. We humans have the same operating system today as 200,000 years ago. And when anything is out of alignment of your expectation, your perception, the human construct will support your thoughts. And when this happens, here's how it goes. One, the alarm system activates. This engages the sympathetic nervous system red zone. Two, stress loop connects. So now it's my body, body, mind are in sync. Three, mind identity is taken over by the ego. Four, the body identity supports the thoughts and focus held in mind. If you are angry, you will now feel the aggression in the body. And five, the identity base is set for you to react and fight or flight in event. Judgment is being stuck in the problem. Reaction is the behavior caused by the problem. And in this reaction, you do not have freedom. So what I, because I, I had some questions on that. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, yeah I think uh, if, if people can understand the, the stress loop that we were talking about, when you get caught up in it, it's that that's it well that's why today i wanted to really explain this because i had such great feedback mm -hmm. on yesterday's episode all week long we've had great feedback so let's slow down and take a look at a scenario that maybe we can understand the concept a little bit better so during the election facebook and other social media platforms were a place where one could express their opinions so there are two candidates, and if you have a strong belief in one, this will be tied to an emotion. Beliefs is what you think. Emotion is the belief you feel. It's felt. It's what you feel. So, there's a post in your Facebook feed that is accusing your candidate of something that you believe strongly is a lie. It's wrong. Now understand, your belief about your candidate creates your perception of how you see them. Now this post you see, your first reaction, this is a lie. Well, at least you perceive it as a lie. And this activates your alarm system. The stress loop connects, your beliefs take the mind identity, your body supports your beliefs and anger, and this sets your behavior in event, judgment. Your judgment is this is a lie, and your reaction is your actions to defend and attack. With me so far? So far. <laughs> so, you go and post a rebuttal from a reactive, angry energy. Now, what was the purpose of posting this reply to that particular post you read? Well, the purpose is to get the person who originally posted this content to change their mind and agree with your view, your perception, and your belief system. So how do you think this person met your reply to their post which was done through the anger energy. With the same energy. <laughs> well, that's exactly right, David. They will feel attacked. So what is the defense mechanism of the human being when attacked? They defend. And this defend and attack mechanism, this person who put the original post must defend their post, which was their belief and their perception about their candidate and that you as they perceive attacked and what will be your state as they post their rebuttal Same. <laughs> of course <laughs> you now have the resentment program fully activated 
You are angry. You must be heard. You must defend your guy. You must fight. And you do. You fight on Facebook. And you unfriend the person. And you post what happened. And this gets others to agree with you. But also, it brings in others who do not agree with you. And these others might even be family or a close friend. But the way your story is, I am right. The anger energy is activated. It's very aggressive. You become outraged at your friends. How can they agree with this with this other person? How can they agree? Why don't they agree with me? And you become defiant. You get belligerent. And these are all part of the anger energy. Now what happens as a few hours pass after these events happen? Well, the anger energy subsides and you drop into that depressed energy of guilt. In the guilt energy, you now feel regret. And this is the process of living life in the human constraint. This person will feel bad until they get their win back and they get their second win and the whole process starts again. Do you understand, David? <laughs> yeah. So any thoughts on that? Yeah. Um, so like millennials and like the younger Every, generation. No, nah, I don't even want so, to say the younger generation no, 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 no. on so, this one. Yeah. So so there's a saying that people type when when you got the keyboard warriors and people who are stuck in this energy online and they say keep that energy, which is basically saying like, you know, you wouldn't be saying this in person, you know, kind of thing. Right. And that's one of those big things is because when you get behind that keyboard, the ego can type faster than you can. Yes. If you don't have a control over it. And once you press send, it's out there. Somebody saw it. You're absolutely right. You know, and and these are the thing, these are the emails I get because people also write me that they feel that I am telling people not to have an opinion. That's what they write me, right? Yeah, or defend themselves. Right. And this could not be further from the truth. The human being has the ability to rationally respond to events. And this is an ability that is unique to the human animal. Other animals use their instincts to act to their environment. Yet, even though we as human beings have this amazing power to respond, if we are trapped in the human constraint of stage three, we are unconscious and we will react in old patterns of behavior. In the state of event, judgment, reaction, our aim, body, is in resistance. It becomes tight in this state of the body will support the focus, which is the mind and the focus in fear, the red zone. Not only in this state will every cell in the body go into reaction, but the brain will also go into reaction and set in perceptional blindness. This is when you become locked into the problem and it's impossible to see nothing but the problem and this sets behavior to be reactive and literally blocks your ability to respond and move your state into expansion. So I want to make it clear. I am not telling people to not have an opinion. I'm telling you to respond instead of react. My purpose is the vitality purpose. My aim is to expand energy. Everything I'm teaching you in Stress Mastery is about you and your expansion. It's about you finding freedom, you moving through life in peace. Now, if you wanted to reply to that particular Facebook post that was portraying a negative story about your candidate, you have, the, you have every right to reply. But before you do, practice one thing. Slow down. You can literally say those two words three times and you will switch everything over. Slow down does what? By pausing. Consciously slow down, you break the stress loop, which was set. Remember that stress loop was set the moment you saw that Facebook post in one twenty thousandths of a second. When you saw that post, 
that loop was set. But as fast as the stress loop connects, it also can be broken with the same speed. By saying the words, simple, slow down, repeat it consciously three times, you, re you actually reset the human construct. So this turns on the recuperation system of the green zone and activates that parasymp parasympathetic nervous system. And two, the stress loop is broken. Three, the mind identity becomes you. This is what's meant by being mindful. Four, the body identity supports the mind focus, which now is in growth and expansion. And this allows not only the body to calm, but the prefrontal cortex of the brain to connect. This is what controls willpower. And five, this sets the state in the identity base in event, awareness, and response. Now, you can post a response. And this will be a well-intentioned response. Not with the purpose of changing the person's mind, but with the intention to give them a different viewpoint. Maybe some knowledge. Maybe direct them so they may look more closely at what they believe. So, you post the response. And boom, they attack you. As you remain in that state of event, awareness, and response, you can now let this go. Why? Because it doesn't serve you to fight. Because this person has what's called the death effect. They're stuck in their stories of their perception. And they cannot hear you. They're in judgment and reaction. So the ego in their mind is creating a whole movie in their head telling them a story about how you are wrong. And it does not serve you to respond a second time. But just know this. As they defend and attack their expectation... Their expectation from you is you will fight with them. In fact, the ego must have this. So the reason the ego must have you fight with them, this is what keeps the anger energy burning and keeps the anger energy to continue to flow by not responding to their attack. You leave them to ponder their own stories and beliefs. Now they may feed the ego by attacking your good nature or attacking someone else, but this is not your problem. So do you understand that, Dave? Yeah, I, I think a lot of times um, not responding is, is almost a better response in like nine out of ten cases. And and it's honestly, it's because it's a back and forth. It's constantly going to go whether you're in the right or even if you're not trying to defend. They're going to feel that way. As long as you're not responding out of judgment, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, out of that judgment energy. If you're doing it, oh, I'm better than that. I'm not going to do it. You might as well respond, but react because you're already reacting. Remember, yeah, it's yeah, about yeah, your sure. state, right? Yeah. If that passive aggressiveness doesn't serve you either. So yes, you can have an opinion and you can respond or sometimes a response is not a response, just like David said, but... If you are activated and feel the anger, just ask yourself this question, and it's an important question. Why am I activated? Because if you're activated, understand this. Every single conflict you have is a program activated. Every single conflict you have is a program activated that you were not born with. Every single conflict you have is a program activated within the cage mind. So if you get activated, why? It's an opportunity to let go. Why does this bother me so much that this person has this belief? Why must I fight them? Why do I feel I have to give up my own freedom to go into judgment and hurt my body, hurt my mind, hurt my behavior, 
hurt my reputation, maybe hurt my family, maybe hurt my friends. Why? Why must I defend and attack this? So if you become trapped in the human constraint, understand you lose your freedom. See, when we're trapped in the human constraint, we become the identity of what we defend and what we attack. Anything and everything that does not meet our expectation that causes us to go into judgment and reaction becomes part of who we are. That makes sense to you? Yeah. Uh, I also like, before you, you respond to anything like that, whether you're in a in the green zone, red zone, whichever way you want to do it, whatever your energy is, you got to ask yourself, what's the risk versus reward to this thing? You know, the risk is that you continue this going and they can continue and boom, boom, boom with the risk of you actually getting swept into it. And what's the reward from it? Maybe this person needs to hear an opinion and, and the side of it. You know, you really have to ask yourself. And then if you, you stay, decide from if you there. stay present, you can't get swept in. And that's the challenge. Yeah. Be, the challenge is this, David, the anger energy is explosive. Mm -hmm. See, getting angry rarely if ever solves anything. Usually it makes things worse. We get upset, then the other person gets upset, and then the problem or issue never really gets resolved. Anger is an energy, though, that can drive change. Some people get angry at some people who may be putting them down, and that anger may drive them to build an empire. Some people get angry because they were teased as a fat kid, and this anger may push them to become a bodybuilder. Who knows? Mm -hmm. But anger must be used quickly and it must be used in awareness. This is the difference. If you use anger that way, that means that you're, you feel the anger, you got activated, you're upset, but yet slow down, go into the green zone. And what is that? That means you're now feeling this anger and explosive energy. Encourage. Encourage. You're alert and focused. And if you're encouraged, you can race to neutrality. And you can say is, can I be flexible in what I'm feeling? Why am I feeling this? What do I need to do? And that can raise you into willingness, 310 willingness. And now you can say, can I re-identify what I'm feeling here? What I, what I am? And this is what brings you to acceptance. Acceptance and reason. When you can surrender and you can accept life embrace it but anger must be used quickly and in that awareness if not if you get streamed into anger you will exhibit the aggressive behavior that we just described and it will trap you in the guilt and regret see you got to understand that that anger energy is what feeds off and feeds in the resentment program so Hate is too great a burden to bear. Martin Luther King Jr. Just not worth it. That's what he's saying there. So the practice of slow down is one of the most powerful practices that can allow us to watch over our perceptions. See, every moment of your day brings floods of impressions of the world into your environment in your view. And this fills our minds with perceptions that arise from what we see, feel, hear, all five senses. Now, this is all set within the expectations that we hold of how things are supposed to be. When we practice slow down, it allows us to stand guard of the cage mind and we can then maintain conscious mind control. We protect our state of being and the vibration that we put out into the world. It's simple. When you simply say, slow down, we not only manage our minds, we also take care of our body. The slow down sets the aim, the body in expansion. It sets the focus and mind in growth and this sets your behavior, your actions to respond. So what happens in this state of expansion, the body can repair, 
the body can grow. You can create new habits. You can create new skills. You have full use of your willpower. You can respond to what's happening in your environment. You have total freedom to live your life the way you want to live your life. You are not trapped in a constraint, right? It's starting to make sense now. I can see it. I always can tell when it makes sense because David's head will start to bob. So that's it. So, <laughs> so when we consciously slow down, we are actually protecting our peace of mind, our clarity, and our freedom. All of these are anchored to our perceptions. Mr. Millennial, super millennial, I'm sorry. It's all you. He aged me for a second. <laughs> you don't want me to call Mr., right? I didn't hit that market. No, I, I um it's a it's a very um delicate balancing, you know, process because like like you said, not responding could be just as you know effective as responding. And then, you know, what I would say in the beginning, if you're just starting out, like if you're you're just coming from learning to not feel the need to respond. I think that's the big, if like, you know what, you put your phone down, whatever, you walk away, and you feel that itch that you have to respond, you have to respond. Ask yourself who's wanting to respond. Is this a, a feel, like a need, like a, I, I feel like I can really pass on some good sure. input, and you have that tug on you where it's like in, a, in a, the right state, or is it ego, like, man, he won. Well, you, know, you, I think you could, that's very important. And a way to do that is, are you in judgment or awareness? Mm -hmm. You can actually ask. That's the only question you really yeah. have to ask, right? <laughs> if I'm in judgment, that means I'm judging what I'm perceiving here. And what is the purpose of your response? So here's the other thing. So, Dave, you're right. So when you respond, what's a response? A response is when you have your behavior and take action out of awareness you're aware right you are present it's a response now what's the intention of the response because this is one thing we all must let go of you do not have the right to change someone else's belief systems their belief systems are there for them to grow from for them to grow out of the constraint for them to live their life so if you're on facebook and your idea to response is because you don't like their beliefs you're wrong you have to stop you don't have the right but if your response to them is to plant a seed i always like planting mm -hmm. seeds right that's okay but if you plant a seed, you cannot have an expectation. You can't force it to grow. Yeah. And you can't, right? You can't have an expectation that they're going to agree with you yeah. or an expectation they're not going to react or an expectation that they will get you. You don't have expectations. Mm -hmm. You plant a seed and you let it go. Yeah. Now, if they come back to you and ask a question, they have opened their mind. Why is that important? When somebody is defending and attacking, the deaf effect means they are not consciously there. And so when that happens, you're talking to their ego. And their ego is all about winning, competition, win. I must win. I must control. I must do this. Now, so you're wasting your time. If you're taking care of yourself, we talk about it in Stress Mastery, to be selfish with a capital S, there's no reason to fight with anyone. It gets you nothing. It serves you zero. So if somebody disagrees with you, and how do you know when you need to slow down? The moment you feel you have to defend yourself. Yeah. The moment you get that feeling, all you have to do, and it takes a second, less than a second actually, and you can just, wow. Slow down and you will switch a nervous system over just as fast as the nervous system acted. Now, once you do that, you can say, okay, do I, I, you may want to respond and you respond. If they then come back at you with the same type of attack, you let it go. Or you may say, 
I need to contemplate this a little bit. Let me go and sit with this and try to figure it out, like David said. Or you may say, my best response is no response because I'm not. it's not my right to change your belief system. Yeah, that one guy, uh, what he say? Turn the other cheek? Very, yeah. very popular man. That was a pretty popular yeah, I, teacher, I, I right? Think, uh, Healthy debates are, are one of the greatest things ever. I love it. And a healthy debate doesn't have an ego in it. The conflict yeah. does. Yes. And I think that's one of the biggest things because I've, I've changed my mind on a lot of views on religion and mm-hmm. cultural things and because of a healthy debate. And that doesn't mean I agree with the person. And it doesn't mean that my beliefs or my viewpoint will change afterwards. But when we leave that conversation, it's left with the respect that I was able to say my piece. That person was able to say theirs. And it's respecting each other's point of view without having to feel like there's a winner involved. Right. So I'll close this episode with this, that if you cannot change your belief system, you cannot escape the human constraint. Mm -hmm. You stop the flow of expansion. That means that you are stuck. If you can't look and examine your own self, your own judgments, you will stay stuck. And when I mean stuck, this is when your life becomes diseased in mind, body, and behavior. That's it for today's show. Our mission here is to create a shift in a planet. You can join us on this mission by simply like, share, subscribe. Links are right below the show. As always, until next time, stay inspired.